We have with us here on Sports in the studio, none other than the answer. Alan Iverson, welcome back to the Philippines and welcome to Sports Desk. Thanks, man. Thank you for being here. We know you've had a really long day. Uh, let, let's start off. This is uh, you've been here before, but now you're coming back. You're putting together a clinic. You're putting together an event that's going to be a fundraising event. Also, uh, why does it mean so much to you to try and give back and help out? Uh, first of all, you you got to give um, you got to give Cheryl all the credit for. Um, for bringing me back and 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 taking care of me the way she has, um, it means some because you're just giving back. I mean, yeah. that's that's the uh, that's the biggest reason. And then you know you just feel like when you get a chance to help somebody, why not? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I've been helped by many people along the way. And if it wasn't for a lot of people in my life, um, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish the things that I've accomplished in life. So why not give back? What made you decide to do this in the Philippines? Cheryl. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's plain and simple. Cheryl. Simple as that. You know what I mean? It, it, talked about it. It was a great idea. Um, everything about it. Sound sound good, and um, fortunately, um, she and my management made it happen. Now, looking at uh, what's going to be taking place while you're here, you have you have the clinic going on, you have the the, the all-in uh, basketball charity event that's going to be happening as well. What are you looking forward to the most in terms of as far as the basketball action that you're going to see, and you're going to coach? Are you going to play a little bit? No, nah, I'm, I'm too old to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to coach. Um, I'm looking I'm looking forward. I know the guys that that's participating in the game. Yeah. So. The biggest part of um, how I feel is knowing that the fans are going to enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even, even without me participating mm -hmm. in it as far as playing, playing in the game, um, they're going to they're gonna get a show. And that's the most important thing. You, you bring in entertainers and people that will uh, put on a show to where it's the fans will cherish it and remember it, hopefully, for the rest of their lives. Considering that you will be coaching in this clinic and you'll be teaching kids as well as some of our yeah. professional <laughs> basketball players yeah. a few moves, when we talk about Allen Iverson, of course, it's automatic, the crossover. Right. Um, as someone who learned to do this along the way and gave it swag, yes, as we were talking yeah. about earlier uh, before, uh, in last night's episode, um, what can you teach these guys in terms of the way that Allen Iverson plays? It, I, I think the whole concept of me and my DNA is playing every game like it's your last yeah. and <clears throat> trying to play the right way. I had to learn how to play the right way. Larry Brown taught me how to play the right way. You know, I, in the beginning, I was just going off of just raw talent and just playing the game, but didn't know how to really play the game. And um, I mean, it was basically like my high school coach taught me how to play the high school game. My college coach taught me how to play the college game. And then my NBA coach taught me how to play the NBA game. And it, it it's, it's more like, you know, as time went by, I felt like I didn't really have to rely on my athletic ability so much if I could outthink the guy that I was playing against and um, or the team that I was playing against. And um, once I learned that, it made the game so much easier for me. That, that's also one thing that I wanted to ask you about because you were always the athletic guy. You played football, you played basketball, you won awards for both sports. You were drafted, like, coaches were going after you, and your game evolved. You started out as this young guy who was, well, crossing over Michael Jordan, <laughs> breaking his ankles, to the point guard slash shooting guard who was rebounding, dunking over guys. I don't know about point guard. I, 
shooting guard, shooting guard. Shooting guard. who yeah. was rebounding and dunking all over all these people. And everyone talked about how you were about like what six foot one ish. Six one. Six one. Y'all gonna give me that? I'll okay. take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you gonna give me, I take it. But you didn't. I don't play think so, like, but I take it. <laughs> but you didn't play like you were six one. Um, that's that's for you. How important is that legacy that you left behind? That when people see you, they know that you're the small guy, but you're the guy with the biggest heart out on the floor. It's it's basically like. Um, I would say just the competitive nature and just wanting to win so bad and and not even for myself, you know, for basically for the guys that I played with, you know what I mean? I like, I wanted to be the guy that they love going to war with every night because they knew I was going to bring it every single night, hurt, sick, anything. You know what I mean? They knew that when they was in that foxhole with me, they can look to the left, look to the right, and I'll be on one of those sides. And that's what meant everything to me, playing the game. You know what I mean? I love my fans and love to put on a show for my fans night in and night out. But it meant so much to me to be there for my teammates. Looking at your career, and as, as far as everything that you've accomplished, all the things that you've done, What's one of the things that stands out the most? Just being, just being drafted. Yeah. You know, being where I'm from, especially being from the neighborhood that I'm from, and you know, people telling me there's no way you could be from Newport News and make it to the NBA. You know what I mean? That's a dream that you won't fulfill. There's no way you can do it. And then to be able to actually do it, not even the fact that of, of, of being picked number one, you know, just to be picked, period. And then all the other things that I did in my career was just extras to me. You know what I mean? Like they was just, like all I wanted was basically a chance and then once I get a chance, then I'm going to do what I know I can do. And um, that was the best feeling for me. Even, even with winning the MVP and all-star games and scoring titles and all that, just getting drafted was enough for me. Do you think back in your career and you, do you ever wish that, I wish I had that second guy that the other guy I mean, and you, you play with Melo you play with C Webb but Melo was kind of young when you were there and and C Webb was a little bit uh, on his way out of on, on his way out of the league but do you ever wish that you had a chance like like how LeBron had in Miami LeBron had in Cleveland um, no because I'm I was satisfied with every team that I played with I was satisfied with the guys that we had and I always believed that we could win it. Obviously it never happened, but I would never disrespect them in a way to feel like I need to play with somebody else to get it done. I felt like I could get it done with whoever I played with. You got to be talented to be in the NBA. All the guys that I played with were NBA players and so they had to be something, you know what I mean? It just we never had enough. And I, I just really look at it like it wasn't meant for me. Like God didn't want that in my life. You know what I mean? He didn't want me to accomplish that. You know, I accomplished so many things in life and he blessed me with the ability to do a whole bunch of things. And that was just one thing that I didn't accomplish in life. When it comes to your career, there are so many highlights and so many moments that when people talk about it, it's impossible not to get excited about it. Were you aware that you generated that much excitement on the floor while you were playing? Um, I, I, would, I, I think over time, being in Philadelphia and then actually like watching highlights mm -hmm. you know a lot of times i was like damn did i do that you know what i mean like 
you know, a, a lot of t you know, and because I'm I'm a fan of the game too. Yeah. Like I'm 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 fan I'm a fan of these guys that play now, and I watch them and like wow, you know what I mean. And I think back on it and look at my highlights and my documentaries and stuff like that, and I look at it like. You know, I really did do some things. <laughs> some things. <laughs> you know? some, some things. I, I like how you downplay some, this. Some things, huh? But yeah, but, I mean, I, I, to me, yeah. to me, you know, besides um, Michael Jordan, you know, without being cocky, like looking back on it, like I can look at it and say, "Damn, that was it was a show." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was. Real exciting. I can understand why little kids, I mean, and grown-ups, yeah. feel the way that, you know, they feel about me. You know, so I, I tried to put on a show every night. You know what I mean? And and that's what, that's what I think that's what made me so consistent in people's eyes because I really actually played every game like it was my last, knowing that it could be. You know what I mean? And then I wanted to give the person that might not ever see another NBA game a show and something to remember and cherish for the rest of their life. That, that highlight against MJ, that crossover, when, when you got the ball on the top of the key and you saw him in front of you, it looks like your face lit up a little bit. I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. Because, put, put us there. Because I used to, I used to, um, I used to tell my friends growing up, that, you know, if he ever guarded me, I was going to try my move on him and, <laughs> and, and see what happened. And it really actually <laughs> happened. Like, and, 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 and it, I remember, I, I remember the game and I remember stepping on the court with him. And this is my idol. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he didn't even, he didn't look real to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> I like I really saw his his like his aura. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm looking at him, I'm like, damn, you know, those are the real Jordans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those, those are real. You know, he, he got them on. You know what I mean? I'm looking at his shorts and I'm looking at everything. His uniform, and I'm like, damn, that, that's really him. You know what I mean? But when the ball went up in the air, I just blacked out. You know, all of that went away. It was just now it's time to compete. And um, I remember getting the ball, and um, I heard Phil Jackson say Michael, and he was basically telling him to switch, because I think it was a pick and roll or something like that. And once he got on me, I'm like, my idol was guarding me, you know what I mean? So I told all my friends and my family that once he got on me, I was going to try my move. And I tried it, and fortunately, it's, it's legendary. Yeah, it is. It, it's it pretty is. historic, actually. <laughs> 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 but it's not just that moment. Again, you have so many, so many highlights that that bring out your your attitude, just your your love for the game, and, and how passionate you are. Like stepping over Tyrone Blue or yeah. breaking Daniel's ankles. I'm sorry, that was hilarious. He just fell. And every it, time we see you play, you're right, you do show us. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up because you, it's something that we actually witnessed and it's something that you've backed up, that you play every game like it's your last. And, well, I don't, what else can we say, though? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's actually the way you're feeling about, the way you felt about Michael, that's, it's, hard, yeah. it's like us sitting wow. here across you. That's like, it's no, really I, I'm <laughs> No, and I always tell him, like, okay, I, again, I have a list <laughs> of NBA players that I feel deserve a ring. And you're actually on it along with Steve Nash. <laughs> well, speaking of which, the 96 draft class, I know we're going to have to wrap up really yeah. quick, but the 96 draft class, to you, is that, is that probably the best draft class? Because it's pretty deep. Probably. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. Serious? It's not, it, it, but it, it's, it's not even debatable. Like, I don't even know why people even try to debate yep. on something like that. Like, Wait okay, well, we understand that LeBron and Dwayne and Melo was in the same draft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we understand that. But then, and, and those are three Hall of Famers. Uh -huh. 
But when you look at our class, what, what do we have? <laughs> Damn near ten, you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 you can't even compare it. I understand yeah. why you try to do it, but because it's, it's it's good for conversation. Mm -hmm. But I mean, are you serious? Thank you. you. Know what I mean, like, I you just I argue with that the book with everybody. I said no, ninety six the best, and nobody ever nobody believes me. But thank you very much. Straight from the number one pick, right there. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you all for having me.